Welcome to Identity Church Sunday Morning Message, where our sonship is revealed. Stay tuned at the end of this message to receive more information about resources available through Identity Church. Now grab your Bible, sit back, and enjoy a message from Identity Church that is already in progress. The title of today's message is The Power of Your Desire. Some of you know that I was in Charleston, South Carolina. I believe that God had told me that that city would be a pearl of great price for me and for me to go back, not ruin my vacation when I was there when he told me that. So I set the week aside this last week and went to seek God on some things. Where am I at? Where am I going? And how am I going to get there? That was kind of the questions I had, and I, I was... Dog determined to have an encounter with Jesus or an angel or somebody or something. And I got to tell you, it didn't happen the way I expected. And uh, <clears throat> so the first thing that happens is a businessman tells me, I need to spend time with you. I'm flying to Charleston. I said, dude, how long do you need my day and a half? I said, I'll be 10,000 bucks. Okay. All right, <laughs> bring me a check. I kind of was kidding, but I kind of wasn't kidding because I valued my time. And this crazy ex Amish prophetic guy m- started messing with me with some of his revelation, and, and it, it sparked something. I had two or three days before he got there. And I'm praying about the promises God had given me in ministry. And I'm praying about why I'm not seeing it. But I have this desire to see what God had promised me. Anybody have desire? And, 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 but, I, but it just, and I have an ability to take God at his word, and, and, and I can beat a promise out of Jesus. If he made a promise, I can beat that promise out of him. It doesn't always come in the shape and form that it should have because I beat it out of him because I didn't make the adjustments to get it. And one of the things is years ago, God had told me uh, as an itinerant minister that I would see power, I would see miracles, I would see favor, and that I would share the platforms with some of the who's who of the charismatic zoo. He actually specifically gave me one name. He said, before the end of the year, you'll share the platform with Tommy Tenney. And the last Sunday of that year, him and I shared the same platform in New York at a several member, several thousand member church. So it was the fulfillment of a promise. At the same time, a situation happened with another pastor, and God pretty well crashed my ministry. He literally let it get murdered. And I laid my head on row 15 of Southwest Airlines up against the window, and I wept all the way home. Why did you do this? In one hand, I had the fulfillment of your promise. In the next hand, you just killed everything. And he says, do you trust me? I said, I don't have a choice. I have to trust you, but I don't like you. I said, why did you do that? And here's what he said. At the rate you're going, you will get the success of my promise, but you'll lose your wife. Do you trust me? Kid, I'm like, is she worth it? Now, let's get real here. I had laid my life down. We were going to get divorced when I got saved. So I was willing to live without her. Am I still willing? What was my desire? Please, God. What was my desire? Please, God. Obey God. And if she was in my way, I'll get a new one. So 
So, listen, here's what, I'm, I'm preaching some stuff today. And you got to realize, when I get into the Word of God, it's to learn something, it's not to preach something. So when I have to get in the Word of God to learn something, and now I'm preaching it, you can catch something that you didn't know you needed to learn. And so this week, going over this stuff and not having the angels show up and Jesus not walking through the wall, I go, what is, what is my problem? And he says, your, your desire is out of kilter. Because I want the promises. I want the power. I want the miracles. I want the salvations. I want, because that's part of the promise. And the only way I can describe it is like, I said, Jesus, make the adjustment. Help me make the adjustment. And it's like he turned the knob of desire in my heart toward my wife. Not just the promises, but the promises, not without her, but with her. So he adjusted my desire to have the promises with her in alignment, in agreement. You know, that's difficult. That's a miracle. I'm going to prove it in Scripture. And all of a sudden... God put something in motion, and I'm not going to tell her story. I'll let her do that someday. But within hours, she was given a gift with a name with worth thousands of dollars, and, 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 and she had an encounter with God that she needed. I'm sitting in the background going, I've been waiting for like 20 years for this. And he goes, yeah, isn't it amazing? One adjustment. And the mysteries of the kingdom showed up toward the one I desired. And so I was like, Phew, that's pretty crazy. It, it, it was, a, Karen, it was a, it was a two-minute prayer. It was a two-second two adjustment. It wasn't a life change. I mean, I don't hate her. I just needed to adjust my desire. Does that make sense? I mean, she gives me reason to be mad. Trust me. But in this, in this case, it was an adjustment of my desire that incorporated the promises of God. And so I, I was blown away. And, and so I actually had left Charleston. I took another uh, day and a half and, and stayed in, where did I go? St. Simon's Island, stayed in the hotel, and I started studying. Could I, have, could I have made that adjustment to my desire years ago? Yeah, probably. See, the word desire is wish, to want, to crave, covenant meaning to have a longing for. Desire stresses the strength of feeling and often implies strong intentions or an aim. Desire to start a new life, wish something in, 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 implies a general or transient lo longing, especially for the unattainable. We as Christians, our desire is after some of the things that, that are not attainable by a non-Christian. Non-Christians do not have the desire Christians do because they don't understand what they're trying to obtain. But, I, but, but I'm telling you, as we, adjust, as we adjust our desire, we become a magnet for the miraculous. Amen. Listen, I made one adjustment, and she had an encounter with God. But, and it wasn't a, oh God, uh, this big, it was a quarter turn. It was, wow, only God. So here's some other words for, for desire. To covet, to fancy, to solicit, aspiration, hunger, appetite, and thirst. Those words are interchangeable with desire. So what are you hungry for? What are you thirsty for? What, what makes your soul crave? 
And so I just started studying. I go, because when I get, when I don't know what I don't know, I start in the book of Genesis. And I started Googling in my, not Googling, but in my Bible program, and I picked up the word desire. There's, there's 197 times the word desire is in Scripture. You got a long time today? Not doing it. So here's, here's the word, uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 24 and 25. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and not ashamed. This is before the fall. They were naked and not ashamed. You know, I love when after the fall, uh, they hide from God, and God says, why'd you hide? And he goes, well, we're naked. And he says, who told you you was naked? That's when the fall of man comes in. That's when, that's when you, you start covering things that you shouldn't have had to cover because you became so smart in your own self. Because things were open that were not supposed to be open. But, in Gen- but this is before the fall. But in Genesis chapter 3, verse 16, after the fall, after Eve messed up, after Adam messed up, there was a division that, on- that-, that took place. 3.16, I love that. John 3.16. No, Genesis 3.16 is where it started. To the woman, he said, you shall surely multiply your pain in childbearing, In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband. Anybody been married? Jesus cursed him. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband. I found the problem. And he shall rule over you. Let me add that. So here's what he says to to, to Adam and, and, and 17 and 19, and to Adam, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth to you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. But the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. For you are dust, and to dust you shall return." Here's the problem, though. Because of we are a created being, where you came from must sustain you. He came from dirt, and therefore he had to plow the dirt to be sustained. The problem is, is when you're born again, the spirit born gave you life, and that's what sustains you. And we get mixed up between spirit and dirt. The problem is, when we get mixed up, we put our desire in the wrong aim. We start frustrating over dirt things when we should be drinking life things of the Spirit. See, but marriage cancels the curse because of the cross. Matthew 19, 4 and 6. He says, have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female and said, therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh, so they are no longer two but one. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. This is Matthew 19. Listen, there is a mystery in marriage. The two are becoming one. I am completely incomplete undone without my wife in the promises that God has given us. And I'm going to tell you something. There is war between us many times that should not be because we're looking at dirt and expecting it to give us life. Ephesians chapter 5, 25 and 28. Husbands, Love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he may sanctify her. That was the adjustment. That was the adjustment. I I basically said to God, I don't want the big ministry you promised me if she's not going to be with me. I changed my desire. I haven't come this far to lose that. And when I made that adjustment, 
God started dealing with her on what she needed. Dude, I am more shocked of the response. The focus of my desire unlocked something supernatural. She heard the voice of God. God ministered to her about her, not even me. Are you telling me, Lord, the power of my desire is what could unlock the supernatural to everyone that I'm ministering to? Is my desire to, is to be famous for power, prophetic, that, or is my desire for you to have your encounter? Don't, don't, don't think we don't think that way. That's, it's holy, it's just out of alignment. Where are you at with that scripture? I don't think I finished it. Ephesians 5.25. Husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church, gave himself for her having cleansed her by the washing of the water of the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle, or any such thing, that he might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands, love your wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wives loves himself. Wow. When a, when a man doesn't love himself, I'm going to start figuring out if you love your wife. See, here's godly desires. Psalms 37, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. You know what my problem is? There's another scripture that says the heart is deceitfully wicked. Who could know it? Why? Because you've gone to the dirt to get life to where the Spirit is the only thing that can give you life. You've desired the wrong dimension to get your energy from. 1 Peter 3.10, For whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Out of the, out of the mouth is spoken life or death. And we speak death, and we, 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 then we get upset when we don't see what we want to see. Because when you don't see your desire, what are you speaking? If you're frustrated with the things of God, what are you speaking? You're frustrated with your kids, what are you speaking? You're frustrated with your church, what are you speaking? Turn that knob. So you're desiring to have peace when you won't be peaceful. That was prophetic. That was for somebody. Galatians 5.24. And those who belong to Jesus Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and its desires. I'm telling you, when, when, when I started studying this, I realized that some of this, I'm, I'm dealing with a bunch of guys that are rebuilding their life, and they've got crazy passions. Why? Because they put their desire in the wrong place. Would you desire porn more than your wife? You're in trouble. You're in trouble. Why? Your desire is evil and wrong at that point. It's a quarter turn, guys. Most of us, it's just a quarter turn. Some of you need a half a turn, but most of it, it's a quarter turn. There's some people who need to go a couple turns around. I know a few of them. People. And there's some people who ain't even got a knob. Okay, you, you got to figure out, you know, am I a quarter or half, or I just need a new knob? So talk to this guy. I said, your desires are screwed up. Why? You know God said that she's the only one you're supposed to look at. 
The reason your desires are screwed up is you've looked at someone else's image that is forbidden and your desires have screwed up and you can't even love her. Therefore, you don't love yourself enough to know that God will heal this. Say something. Oh, me, oh, my. Something. Second Timothy 3.12. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Jesus Christ will be persecuted. Holy moly. I make the adjustment. Now I'm leaving it, and persecution will come. Of course it's going to come. Get over it. Get above it, and do something about it. Now you'll join prayer. So, so why are we, why are, if our desire for him is him, our desire for, for him is in proper alignment if you're married, okay? Let me, if when it's not in alignment, she is going to not like you. She's got to take her issues to the cross or the curse that happened in Genesis will absolutely, she'll be contrary to you. But I'm the priest of my this is I'm the priest of my home. I'm the one who brings the sacrifice. And when I did it properly, I made a small adjustment. She had an encounter. I'm gonna tell you something. God said some things to her, he can get away with it. He said some things to her that when he says he loved her, she actually might have believed him. Because I've said it along, I, I love you, bitch. You say the B word under the breath. I love you. Okay, do you want to preach? <laughs> Psalms 145, 19, moving on. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. The problem is, is if your fear button... It's not the fear of the Lord, your desire button will never work. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I made an adjustment in prayer. The man sitting in front of me had some stuff. I applied some wisdom. I answered a prayer. She talks to God. The whole thing went whoosh for one adjustment. But then wisdom had... a. I had the answer. I just needed to negotiate it. <laughs> he fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He also hears their cries and saves them. So would you have the right desire toward him in alignment with your spouse? Wisdom comes in. He saves you. You, you catch this. We're wanting Jesus to come save us when actually what he's saying is those who fear me have wisdom. You might actually save yourself because he's given you a thought on what to do. Then you have own, those were godly desires. Now you have your own desires. James chapter 1, verse 14. But, though, but each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desires. <sighs> Let me go ahead and get this and tell a story. 1 Timothy 6, 9. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation. Hmm. Into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Proverbs eleven twenty three: the desire of the righteous ends only in good. The expectation of the wicked is in wrath. Proverbs 18, 1, whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire. Hmm, I can pray at home. I can do this at home. I don't have to come to prayer. I can worship Jesus without coming to church. What does it say? Whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire. 
he breaks out against all sound judgment. <laughs> so I, I'm going to take your, I can do it without anybody, and call you on it. Ungodly fleshly desires. For the desi- uh, Galatians 5.17, for the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For those are opposed to each other to keep you from doing what things you wanted to do, to keep you from doing what you wanted to do. Dirt versus spirit. Flesh versus spirit. All right, here's the one that I'll tell my story. James 4.2, you desire and do not have. <laughs> what does it say? You desire and do not have. When I don't get what I desire, I want to murder you. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. There's times where me and Susie, I will pick a fight just to have makeup sex. I didn't say my desire button was in the right. I needed to turn it. You do not have, because you do not ask. Because I didn't know how to ask properly, I decided to pick a fight. Here's a case in point. My new pickup truck, it's a beautiful pickup truck, was not built for Charleston. It is 18 feet long. And their parking spots are 12. <clears throat> Very narrow streets, because they were horse and buggies when these street, this city was built. And uh, I parked, put money in the meter, it took my money, and I come back, and that little three-wheeled parking meter lady wrote me a ticket. Made me mad. So I called Susie, checked the credit card. I want to make sure that the meter took me, and it did. It took my money. <laughs> Got me a $14 ticket. Made me mad. And I'm like, this is a, this, this is, this is a, this is wrong. And so I look at, shut up. <laughs> so, so it just, it was the principle of the thing. It was absolutely the principle of the thing. And I had to make a decision because I called him. Do I go down to city hall and get my money back? Do I argue debate for two hours for fourteen dollars, but I, it was it, it had become. Uh. So I came to my senses and just paid the ticket online, just paid it. Thought it was good. Well, that eighteen foot vehicle. In another parking lot, same stupid little three-wheeled meter lady. <sighs> it just, what was that scripture about murder? <laughs> you desire and do not have, so you murder. So I, I, I showed her, I showed her the, the the credit card thing. I showed her and, and and said this wrong. She says, well. You know, I, I think I saw that truck. Were you over on King Street? Yeah, yeah. You were taking two spots. I said, that isn't what it says. So that's an injustice. You didn't write that on there. You said I didn't pay my, you know, the, I did. Me, 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 just me, just me. Meanwhile, I'm stuck in a parking place that I need to leave, and there's a car there. And uh, This is 18 foot, but there's a, a brick flower garden that's kind of in my way. So I just put it in four-wheel drive and ran over flowers. I didn't murder her, but I did kill her flowers. <laughs> so, so, so what am I saying here? I'm saying I was learning about desires, and, 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 and I was desiring that the lady would hear my case. 
I was desiring that the lady would have at least sympathy, tell me to do something. Just It wasn't worth the time. It wasn't worth the $14. But because my desire was to be heard. Okay. How many have ever had a desire to be heard and you can't be heard? Then how do you react? Oh, you'd run over some plant, some flowers too, wouldn't you? All right, so let's put this in context and don't look at me like I'm a crazy driver. The fact, the fact is I didn't, I didn't get to plead my case to where I could be heard. So I just, I'm glad I have a four-wheel drive because I tell you what, it almost got hung up. Nope. <laughs> Romans 7.18 will explain it all. <laughs> Romans 7.18 will explain it all. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. Why? Because I was, I was focused on being heard and that rejection made that 11-year-old temper tantrum show up. 11-year-old with a 18-foot four-wheel drive, twin turbo, I'll run over your flowers. <laughs> Ephesians 2, 3. <laughs> Among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of our bodily mind. When, you're, when your desire is out of kilter, you will wrestle thoughts in your mind that you should not have to. I'm telling you, I, I, I'm telling you, I, mean, I know this is funny and he ran over flowers and he's, he's, a, he's, he's crazy, but the adjustment of desire stops the mind battle. Because you were not focused on the right thing. <laughs> how, how many have battled in your mind? You don't know how to shut it down. You, you sing more worship and you read more scripture and it still doesn't get relief. Stop all that. Ask God, ooh, help me adjust my desire button. It, it works. And the second part is, and we're by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. So, desire, desire properly aligned releases a supernatural in the one you're desiring it for. So do we want to take the prophetic promises that this church is supposed to walk in miracles? And just desire that, or desire the ones who need the miracle first come in. That way, it's the benefit is for the body, not for the head. That's an that's that's a desire adjustment. And when you make your desire adjustments, then we start fulfilling John chapter seventeen. And by the way, they were quoting this scripture in the prayer room this morning. I'm like, yeah, you guys are pretty good. Listen to this, John 17, 23 and 24. Jesus is talking, I in them and you and me. He's talking to the Father. I in them, say them. Amen. Say them is me. <laughs> I in them and you in me that they may become perfectly one so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them even as you loved me. This is Jesus talking to the Father. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am to see my glory that you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. What's Jesus' desire? that we become one. 
listen, his first desire is that we become one with him and the Father and Holy Spirit. And then his second desire is we become one among us. Anybody feel some adjustment? It's not much. Some of us, we're, we're, we're close. Some of us haven't been that far. But it's just, it's just a quarter turn. Just a quarter turn. Put your hand over your heart. Say, Holy Spirit, my desire is to be completely in line with you and your will. Show me what to adjust. Show me who to adjust it to. Because when you come in alignment with someone that you're supposed to, that's when the mystery of the kingdom comes in and releases the very promise. Jesus, and we want to give you your desire. So give us the adjustment. Show us how to not run over the flowers. How to come to emotional maturity. Emotional maturity. Listen, it's spiritually, emotionally immaturity when our desire is out of kilter. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Thank you for tuning in to today's message from Identity Church. To know more about us, go to IdentityChurch.net, where you'll find resources such as a calendar, media, and upcoming events. You may also download an app for your mobile device from the Apple App Store or Google Play. Then from your mobile device, you can hear our messages, read from the Bible, take notes, connect with us on the social media, and even pay your tithe. Again, thank you for tuning in to today's message from Identity Church.